Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Fun fact, I'm filming this at 1 a.m. So today's video is how to survive high school 101. Okay, so I've gathered some tips here to help all those people who are still in high school to survive in high school because I've just finished my high school and my IG results, I'm really really satisfied with it and I'm really happy with it. Uh, I was about to cry but I did not cry so yeah okay so just a little backstory when i first started um my senior year i i feel mad <laughs> i got like very very low marks i don't remember how many marks but i know that it's a failed and i think i got a d or something i don't remember but my ig results i got very good marks it's a b and two more marks to an a so i'm really happy and ooh, so here are some tips. There's only 13 tips. Oh, no, 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 14. Okay. First tip that I'm going to give to y'all is know your timetable. I feel like knowing your timetable is really, really important because you have to pack your bags according to the days. I think that this really do help you to be organized. If you're not an organized person, then just do what most of the people do all the time. Chuck their books in the drawer and then you got mouse, you got lizard, you got cockroach. Um, my classmate once has like, I don't know, dead rat in her drawer. I'm not sure if it's a dead rat or something, but it was something. Uh, okay, next one is the second tip that I have is write or draft or maybe even draw stuff down on a piece of paper. Now this is to give you a clearer vision of the idea or concept that you're trying to get hold of. This tip was actually given by a very amazing student, a very smart student who scored like 6 A stars. He said whenever you're studying, get a blank piece of paper and then you just draw down stuff or whatever that comes to your mind. This is mainly how I plan for my videos and this is how I mainly survive through high school because when I get hold of concept, like it's in my head but I can't picture it properly, then therefore I will just jot it down or maybe just draw it down on a piece of paper and it helps me understand so much more so I think that's a tip that is really nice to use now the third tip is make notes in class now if your teacher is really really um, freaking amazing and she can go through like three chapters in like two hours Okay, so if you have a teacher who teaches like really really fast, then your hands will be burning when you're in her or his class. You just be like this the whole time, and that's why I have to go on through like two years of those stuff. My tips on making notes in class, especially if your teacher is really fast and she's just zooming through the class like really really quickly. Here are some of my tips to make notes in class. Number one, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Number two, do it on full scale paper because I feel like it's so much more neater. Number three, write it with pencil. I feel like if you want to write fast, don't use pen, use pencil because just in case you write something wrong, you can just erase and just quickly write through. Instead of having the slow process to get the liquid thing to cover it and then just write before it to dry out, no. Just use pencil. And then next, remember to include your name, date, class, and lesson name in your notes just in case when you're revising later or you're just making another set of notes for revising, you will know when, when is this taken and what class is this or else you just be lost. Okay, the next tip is always ask. If you don't know anything, you can ask. It's either you ask your teacher, it's either you DM them, or it's either you email them, or it's either you search it up online or something, or you just ask your friend, ask your senior, ask anyone. This tip is also given by one of my teachers. He said that always ask if you don't know anything. You don't have to be shy, you don't have to be worried, just ask. If you feel like you're shy, then ask someone you're more comfortable with. Next is read textbook before class. This is to get a general idea of what you're going to learn. And my old teacher last time always asks us to read before her class. And I feel like it's kind of useful. When you're in class, you don't have to like really, really slow and you won't be lost somewhere in limbo or something. So read before class. And next is revise by going through your notes and doing questions or pass your paper. There are many many ways to revise. One way is obviously by reading your notes and another way I find this really really helpful was that I 
do questions or I do pass your papers. Now when I was in the lower level, like year 7 or 8 or 9, there is no pass your paper whatsoever. Whatever your teachers want to ask, they ask. So I went to Google and I found this um, worksheets that are for my grade and I did them. And obviously there's also mark scheme, so I'll just compare it to the mark scheme. It's not exactly 100% like what's going to come out in the exam, but at least you get a general idea of what you're going to be tested on and how you're going to be tested on. And I think that this is quite helpful. Now for higher grade students like seniors, obviously you can do past your papers. Doesn't matter if it's stats or stats, I don't know how to pronounce it, stats or IGCSE or GCE. Just go on the internet and search for a passive paper. Now here are some sources for um, IGCSE passive paper if you don't know. Uh, my favorite is Papa Cambridge and Bax Exam Help. Now the next tip is make a timetable for your revision. Uh, I personally did not do this at all because um, I'm a last minute study study year, study person, I don't know. I don't really spread out my study time. I mostly study last minute. <laughs> It's so embarrassing to say this on the internet, but yes, I do study last minute. For those people who don't study last minute and who can't or don't know how to study last minute, well, don't study last minute. It's a really, really risky movement to do and it's really dangerous as well because if you don't know how to do it properly, you're going to flop. But if you know how to do it properly, which I'm not going to teach you how to do it properly, you will shine and you get good results. My tip is that don't study last minute. Instead, create a revision schedule to see what you want to study. Uh, I say delegate your time to all your subjects. For example, like Monday, you can have probably 30 minutes of math, then uh, Tuesday, you can have 30 minutes of chemistry, then Wednesday, you can have 30 minutes of biology. This is something you do in general time, but before the exam, when you're cramping in, my teacher said, don't do this method, because when you do this method, for example, like you only get to do math only once a week. So next week, when you come back to revise math, you will probably forget everything and your mind might be a little bit rusty. So don't do that. To keep your mind fresh, my teacher said that you do a little bit of everything in a day. For example, like 10 minutes of math, 10 minutes of biology, 10 minutes of chemistry. So this way your mind can stay fresh. I know that it's a little bit difficult to transition between subjects, but you just gotta do it. Next tip is watch past your paper videos. Um, the best source on the internet to learn anything is YouTube. I do not only learn all my editing skills on YouTube. I do not only learn um, how to bake or cook on YouTube. I also learn how to do math on YouTube. YouTube is literally your best friend when you are in um, a crisis where you do not know how to do anything at all. There are many, many videos on YouTube. There are videos that help you to understand stuff by showing you, I don't know, some diagram or something or like even in real life. For example, a frog anatomy or a pig's heart anatomy to me to help you understand how the human hearts work. One of the most recommended videos is to watch people do pass your paper. This has helped me so 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 much for my IGCSE maths and that's why I got such a good result. When you're doing a question on the pass your paper and you don't understand how to do the question, go search up the exact code on YouTube and there will be tons of video and you just follow the person and how he or she does it and they will give you formulas and everything so you'll be fine and you'll be safe. So here's a little secret from Kim. Bridged. Each year's IGCSE paper, they have a similar pattern. The topic for each question is similar. For example, for biology, question one is on um, Mrs. Grant. And then the next year, it's also on Mrs. Grant. And then the second question is probably on digestive system for both years the same. So basically what I'm saying is that the topic for each question remains the same, but just that the question itself changes a bit. So the pattern of the topic is always the same. But there are some times that some question won't come out and some more tricky questions will come out. For example, like my ICT, it was way simpler than on any of the past paper I did. So that's a bit risky, but for sciences such as biology, chemistry, and physics, it stayed the same for all the topics. The next tip is know when to stop. This tip, I feel like it's 
um, not really a tip. It's more of like everyone will do it. Some people won't stop, but most of us will stop. I see some people they won't stop and they just keep going and going and going, and then at the end they have a burnout, which is really really sad. But yeah, so no matter to stop, aka to have some of your time, play your games, do your art or anything relaxing and fun for you, obviously. Now the next tip, well this is like the best tip ever that I have to offer and for myself is have cheat sheets. Okay, I have a math cheat sheets that I made right before the exam and this has helped me so much in memorizing stuff because for a person like me that has a short term memory, I feel like this is something like this really really useful. Not only for math or also sciences and probably spellings as well or even Malay translation and all so this like you can just write down all your math formulas in it and then just memorize it like 5 minutes before the exam and once you go into the exam just quickly go to the question that this formula then do it first then you come back to all the questions okay next is use abbreviations uh, this my science teacher is so good at this for example she acts so proud and she could sing R A B C. I could possibly that is the solubility and the insolubility um, table thing. Another abbreviation that's really really common and famous is please carry my apple. Zainal is the laziest, clumsiest man. So we we'll go. Yeah, this is the reactivity ta um, table. All of this are so useful in chemistry. Not only that, for biology as well. Uh, okay, next is. Find notes online because sometimes notes online are easier to understand than the class ones. Now, my teacher gives us notes. She is like the best teacher ever, we don't have to make our own notes, but sometimes her notes might be a little bit difficult for me to understand, especially when I'm lost in class. So, what I did is that I either watched videos on YouTube or I go to Mr. Google, he is my best friend, and I search for a chemistry notes and a specific topic. One of the websites that I would recommend for IGCSE notes is Z Notes. Yeah, I'll put the link here. This is such a good website like to go to for IGCSE or A levels name. Okay, next one is to test whether you understand the topic or concept teach someone else. This is so useful because when you truly understand a concept or an idea or something, try to teach it to others and once you teach and once you, your pupil asks you questions that you never thought of, I always teach my sister and if she understands, then yay. If she doesn't understand, then it's like really dangerous. But my last tip is don't copy, don't cheat, it's not gonna get you far. I know that some people try to cheat in online classes and all. Um, don't cheat because I feel like the effort you put in in cheating is way more than actually trying to study. And the consequences you know that is going to be really bad. Don't think about the marks and the grades because I feel like the marks and the grades does not define your whole education. It's you who define your whole education. It's you who actually understand something. It's you who's actually getting the knowledge. It's not the grades or anything. The test is to test whether you understand something or not. And the mark will reflect whether you're responsible in studying for your test. I say don't cheat because if you cheat now, how are you going to cheat in the future? You can't cheat in comment. And I think these are all the tips I have to offer and it's like I almost two now. I spent some time into making this um, little video. Hopefully, it helped you to be more productive, and hopefully, it has helped you in your school years. Mine is over, and I'll say enjoy the moment and create fun memories and be happy. Cause secondary school, be happy. Don't be depressed. Okay, that's it for now. Bye. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.